Why? Hello and welcome everybody. So earlier I uh, released my template trees for you guys for the Righteous Fire 3.16 Inquisitor. Uh, today I wanted to go ahead and touch up on that template and expand it a little bit further with some basic gearing, itemization, and more so explaining why. Uh, this will also cover the skills that we're running, but remember that this is still a template. It's not a min-max version. Min-max versions and stuff like that will come out with my actual build meaning like one to two days after the pat, like we actually start playing, I can just straight up import my character and make a video guide rather than simulating items. So let's go ahead and start. So starting with the basics, I want to go over, uh, I guess we'll go over gem links. Now, this is not the best way to level, nor is this most efficient. This is just a way that you can level if you're brand new and have literally no idea. Experienced experts, you guys already know everything you can do. You've got, you know, Trigger setups you can use with Flame Wall. Uh, you've got attack-based builds you can level, but that's not for this video. So, to uh, start off with the basics. So, literally, right off the bat, when you first start, you pick an elemental skill, you set, you start going. You've got, like, I think Freezing Pulse is probably going to be your best you can run. And then you get Flame Wall pretty early on. Um, if you, like, look at this at level 1, you get it at level 4. So, it's, like, really, really early that you actually get Flame Wall. So Flame Wall is something you could use for literally your majority time playing through. I personally ran, I think, Holy Flame Totem for a little while. But again, this is all just, it doesn't really matter. It should not be a big deal for the leveling stage. If you want to be extra safe, you can go double degen and use Flame Wall with Scorching Ray. So these are my links. You're not going to have a five link. This is just showing what links you use. So like, you know, if you don't have Scorching Ray, you have a four link. If you have Scorching Ray with no Flame Wall, you have a four link. Just know if you decided on committing to Scorching Ray, you want to use Infused Channeling as it's really good. So, as for generic mobility, this should be pretty straightforward. You've got Flame Dash with level 1 Arcane Surge. Not a super big deal, but it buffs your spell damage. You've got Shield Charge Faster Attacks. You're probably not going to run this right away. This is just, you know, when you want extra mobility, that's where it is. Going into the actual RF links, you're probably not running Righteous Fire until after Cruel Lab. If you want to try running it a little bit earlier, as your four links, you've got Righteous Fire, Burn Damage, Efficacy, and Ellie Focus. Now, as for your auras, this is very important. So, when you first start playing, you have no offensive auras you can run. There's literally nothing. So, you're going to take Vitality for the basic leveling part. Even if you're not running RF, Vitality is really good. Note that on the tree here, you can actually get... Um, Res like vitality reservation efficiency so if you have mana problems you can absolutely take this it's just one regret orb and just switch it it's like not a big deal you're gonna switch it late game anyway <clears throat> so going back to the skills you've got purity of fire but purity of fire is not something you want to run right away the reason why is it's taking 35 percent of your mp to only give you fire resist if you look here a level four purity of fire is only giving you 25 fire res if you bump it to 5, you gain 1 max res. Once you hit the breakpoint of max res, it is worth running for Righteous Fire, in my opinion. So now you've got Purity of Fire, and you've got Vitality, assuming you're running it at, like, your 30s. If not, you know, you're in your 50s. Either way, this is going to be a bulk of your mana because Vitality is flat, and Purity of Fire is a percentage. If you want to throw in an extra damage support before you get your Purity of Fire, so this is going to be Act 2, you can run Herald of Ash. Herald of Ash gives you more spell fire damage, which should work for your Flame Wall and your Scorching Ray, but it does not work for your RF to my knowledge, so that's something you just drop. Remember, you do have the option of running Malevolence, but Malevolence is a 50% aura reservation. You probably will not be able to run Malevolence right away, especially because of the dex requirement, so that's just, you know, something there. One last option you can run is you do have the ability to run Blasphemy, um... Blasphemy Flammability. So if you min-max your uh, Aura Reservation in the early stages, you should be able to run Purity of Fire plus Blasphemy, or Blasphemy um, da, 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 Flammability, which is 70%. And then you have the last 30% towards your Vitality. And then you can get the 100% Reduced Vitality Reservation. So there is room for you to like, you know, play around in the early game. Anyway, that's done. Let's talk about the items. So remember that the tree... Uh, is broken down in here as well. We have an entire YouTube video covering the tree breakdown, but for the basics, you just tap down here and you can see everything here. Right? Okay. 
going back. So I'm going to talk about the basic items. And before I uh, finish talking about these, I just want to start by prefacing with, I have added some little notes. They're in red text. So it's basically a note just explaining something about the item. Um, if you want to just glance through them, it, it will help a lot. Uh, I do have notes on some items in both the early game and the kind of like you're in map slash entering maps. The gear is kind of like a little bit, you know, it goes from like level 70 to like 80, depending on what gear you have at the time. So let's start with it. Your first weapon, um, you want to get a scepter. Scepter gives Ellie damage versus um, a wand giving spell damage. Spell damage does not work for RF. Not a big deal. Um, you can de-level your character once you kill Hillock. So you basically kill Hillock, go to Twilight, go through Twilight Strand, get to the town. You sell a Wisdom and a Scour Orb. You can de-level your character, and then you can buy level one wands, I think it is. Level one, it's either one or item level two, I forgot, has a much higher chance of rolling your fire gems. Then you can just make a new character or continue that character and use your associated alts or transmutations on that weapon. Furthermore, if you get lucky and get a Scorch Fossil, you could Scorch Fossil it. Alternatively, you can do the Venom Recipe for 40% Fire Gems. You've got options. You don't need this at level 1. It's just, you know, something to kind of like aim towards while you're playing. Uh, another thing is you can just pick up all Scepters from the floor that are blue, identify them, and just see if you get plus 1. It, it does happen, right? That is a thing. Spring Leaf is not something you run right away. It's just something for helping people get Righteous Fire going as fast as possible. Um, you want to go with armor bases on everything. Armor bases are very good because of the new armor scaling, and ES doesn't help us until our, essentially, our Cruel Lab. So you just want armor, really. It did buff flat life regeneration. So life regeneration, when you don't have much life, is going to be really good. Your main focus stats on your armor is just straight defensive. So I just have fire res on there just because, you know, I want to make sure it, it's capped. You know, that's your primary goal is getting fire res. You are not running Righteous Fire without your fire res cap. Boots are just Wanderlust, not a big deal. It's mainly just because, you know, 1C unique. Shaper Seed, same thing. It's a 1C unique that gives percent regen. Um, this kind of is a big one. So a lot of new players try to just like skip everything and only run RF at level 18. If you are absolutely trying to do that, get to 20 and use two Kikizuru rings with Vitality. That will give you an insane amount of net regeneration because it gives you one life regen per second per level. So at level 20, you have two, that's 40. You're not going to have a thousand life at that level already. So you're getting an insane amount back. If you're more experienced and you want more damage, you have Pyring. Pyring, very, very, very strong. Okay. Um, as for your belt, you just want to get as much life as possible. Remember though, be careful. In the early stages of the game, you are running off a of flat life regen. Flat life regen falls off um, the more max health you have, which is where percent regen comes in. So it's actually a smart idea to not stack a ton of life in the beginning and allow your flat life regen to kind of carry you until you can slowly sustain and then start kind of transforming into actual life. Okay, next up is just the basic flask setup. Um, if you are running Righteous Fire early, I recommend having two life flasks. One that you use to just continuously heal yourself, and two a seething flask to just tap immediately if you're going to die to heal yourself. You can also, if you don't want to do this, run a flask that just turns off your righteous fire. Another option is if you're running from pack to pack, you have no flask and you're at half life, you can just open up a portal, go in your portal and come out and you're full, like, you're full life and your RF is off. Uh, I just have a quicksilver, a granite, and a ruby flask. Remember that using a ruby flask does mitigate the righteous fire damage, thus giving you more regeneration. So like, if you look here, when I use the Ruby Flask, I actually go positive, right? Now, I don't like to mess too much with the actual like stats here in POB because I'm not very good at like simulating stuff in Path of Building. I'm more of a Path of Exile player. So sorry if these stats look a little bit wonky. This is just not what I focus on, right? I prefer to much focus on the videos and explaining it and then actually doing it and showing you through videos. All right, so that pretty much covers this. Uh, I do want to go back to the skills and talk about one other thing. So there is a very, 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 very good gem I forgot to include in the 1 to 54, which I tag under the utility section. And in the utility section, it's called Enduring Cry. Enduring Cry is basically like a life flask. You hit it and it gives you super, super big life recovery. That super big life recovery, when you get Pious Path, 
which will be your cruel lab reward will also heal your es meaning you just tap in during cry and you are immediately full health full energy shield very 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 strong uh thing especially because it doesn't do anything with flasks right it's just very nuts you don't have to use these links at all urgent orders just makes it cast faster the ink aoe is for later in the game it's for your infernal cry if we even use it question mark not sure all right i'm just gonna bump this down now to like the 51 to 75 and just kind of here 76 through 100 doesn't really matter uh i'm gonna go over here and go to the next set of gear so this next set of gear over here is going to be, like I said, for when you are entering maps slash like very low tier chase items, but they're very impactful for the build, right? So um, weapon, fire multi, fire damage, plus a level of fire gems. This is manageable. Assume that one of these mods is crafted. So basically plus one fire gems was rolled and you got lucky with the fire multi, you had prefix open, you crafted fire damage. That weapon is done until you want to go big. Like, that weapon is just done. Uh, Rise of the Phoenix, one chaos item. It costs literally nothing. It helps you cap at 90% fire res. It is literally, like, one of the most beginner-friendly shields you could possibly get. Helmet. Uh, this is an Elder Helmet, and it has an essential, very easy explanation to how you craft this. So, what you do is, you get a 75-plus helmet base that's Elder. Ideally, pure armor. Armor ES has mana as a prefix. Pure armor does not have mana as a prefix, meaning you'll have an easier time rolling it, right? So uh, you want to use Essence of Horror and slam it. You want to hit an outcome that rolls burning damage with a prefix open because that means you have 30% more Ellie, you have burn damage, which is a gem link, and you have a prefix open to either craft A, life, or B, plus one area gems. So that will take you all the way to red tier maps. You don't have to worry about another helmet. Ambu's Charge is going to be like a one chaos budget item. It gives you life, Ellie res, okay armor, ES, some endurance charges. It's not amazing. If you see here, it says just the very budget item, a pure armor chest with high life and a crafted life is added ES will probably be better. Uh, Apothecary Gloves are the damage over time base for um, damage over time builds. It rolls on an armor ES item. So this is a piece where you would want an armor ES just for the apothecary. Um, gloves are unique now. They can roll a new tier of life regen. I think it's a multiplier to all your life regen. So don't worry about getting hunter right away. This will be expensive, but get apothecary and try to get like the life regen roll, right? Okay, two-tone boots. Um, only reason I have two-tone is for total res. Otherwise, I would use pure armor boots uh, just for more armor scaling. I don't think you can ever give up the total res you get from two-tone but i could totally be wrong there's nothing really to focus on with your boots just you know life res if you get influenced boots you can get max res as a prefix but probably not going to happen um i think it's i don't remember is it warlord or baron i, I forgot which one it is i mean that's the exact same thing i don't remember anyway um marble amulet very good piece arsonist is our allocated node it uh costs well, sorry, anointed note. It costs almost nothing. It's green, green, blue, which is just very cheap. So very sick anoint that we can get early. The reason why you really want the um, uh, the marble base is remember that 1.6% life regen is also 1.6% ES regen, right? So that's pretty, pretty big. Amulets are a massive source of damage. This will be another big currency sink in the build. Um, expect to literally spend 20 exalts rolling a really good amulet and 20 exalts is lucky but thankfully you can sell your your failed bases but that's not for this video basically you can get a plus one fire amulet on here you can also get plus one fire with plus one int you can get plus one fire plus one int life and then you can get dot multi as a suffix so very big location for damage when you're trying to gear up higher rings very good damage like said earlier there is a new source of dot multi you can get, so this will probably be something that replaces your pyring, unless you just want to keep using it until you get one of those. Just, yeah, anyway. Um, so this is another influence piece. You don't actually have to have an influence piece here. You could have a synthesized flammability on hit. It's unlikely you're going to get it that early, but the reason why you want flammability on hit is that way your shield charge applies flam, your cast one damage taken wave of conviction applies flam, you just apply flammability in a, you know multiple ways, uh, which makes it more consistent. Replica Soul Tether, very, very, very big item for this build. 
it splits your degen between your life and your ES, thus massively increasing your life sustain. It also splits literally like incoming damage between your life and ES, which boosts your effective life, just not against one hits. So this is probably going to be a couple X, probably more than a couple X, but it is your, your number one go-to thing to pretty much aim for um, upon trying to fish, like finish out your defensive layers. You can use a Legion Keystone to like, you can like try to transform this jewel socket here, which will rip this and like this and like this. It's a glorious vanity. I don't really like it, but a lot of people keep suggesting it. So that's something you can do. Personally, I'd probably come over here and use like the glorious vanity here. This will not be a mortal ambition. You'll turn this into corrupted soul, but then you can't use tempered by war. So it's just a temporary setup. I don't really like it, but that's what people want to do. Okay. Next up to explain the skills from 70 plus. Um, so auras, by this point, you should be running malevolence, purity of fire, purity of elements. You've got righteous fire, burn damage, efficacy, LE focus. Now, if you do have a helmet, you're not going to run burn damage. I would highly recommend you try to get Awakened Ellie Focus. And if you want more, sorry, Awakened NKOE. And if you want more damage, absolutely drop efficacy for Inspiration. Run Inspiration on Scorching Gray or Flame Wall. Uh, this would be your setup here. This doesn't change. The only thing different is you put Infusion in if you're running Scorching Gray. Uh, here's the Cast One Damage Taken setup that I have run. So Wave of Conviction, Cast One Damage Taken, Combustion, Molten Shell. Oh, I forgot about this guard skill. There we go. One one thing I forgot. So the reason why I run this setup is we're not block, so we're going to take damage. We get hit, we take damage, we immediately retaliate with Wave of Conviction. Wave of Conviction will be doing Majority Fire. Uh, majority Fire will make the exposure be fire-based. Then Combustion rolls its chance to ignite or minus additional fire res. We do get a little bit of sources of ignite chance on the tree. So we have 10% chance to ignite here. We also have Ignite Chance here. And if you want to be more consistent, you do have 20% chance to Ignite here and Ignite Chance here, but I don't think it's worth it. But you know, it's just something else. Molten Shell. Molten Shell is a guard skill. It is the guard skill we're going to be using that gives us armor, sorry, a bubble based off of our total armor, which will be scaling. So that's really good. Uh, this is actually something you can literally grab at Act 1. So this is one thing I forgot to add. Uh, Molten Shell will pretty much go on your left click and you will just permanently have, not permanently, but you know, you'll constantly be generating your Molten Shell and then you'll get a Vol Molten Shell, which you'll put on another hotkey. And that way your Molten Shell is auto triggering. And when you feel scared or, you know, you know, burst damage is going to happen, you hit Vol Molten Shell and then you have another bubble on top of your, you know, so you can kind of chain them. Actually, you can have Molten Shell unless they changed it and your Molten Shell is about to expire. You can hit Vol Molten Shell. And while your Vol Molten Shell is up, your regular Molten Shell also like starts to kind of change right so that's pretty cool i think that pretty much covers everything uh there was a note by someone in chat uh they suggested that you can also get flammability rings through delve which is a pretty good idea if you want to get them early cast one damage taken will not proc on level one yeah, yeah yeah okay so to explain that um you're not using molten shell in like with cast one damage taken you're just putting this here to save gem links you don't have to put it here i just have this here to condense your links so players have more flexibility over where they want to go and do what they want to do uh bandits are going to be kill all pantheon is just it's really going to just be used whatever you think is better for you different progression builds are going to use different ones if you need me to tell you what to pick just go like Arakali because it reduces damage over time and uh pick something uh, i don't know Th this in my opinion is pantheon is always something that i change depending on where my build progression is right so anyway that's pretty much going to be about it i hope you guys had a wonderful time i hope you guys enjoyed yourselves if you did don't forget you can like share and subscribe don't forget, you can also catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. Take care. Have a wonderful time. See you guys all later.